Sign up today for a seven-day free trial at alerts.chartguys.com. Hey everyone, checking in on the cryptocurrency space. I just dropped a big piece of wood on my finger, so clicking is not good. But I didn't break anything, just a big bruise, and maybe I'll lose a fingernail. But the charts wait for no injuries. So we're still in a tightening range. As we anticipated, the weekend wouldn't have much action. And now we're going to look at either a break today as we are at resistance, or if we reject from this resistance and pull back more meaningfully, then we're going to look for a break Tuesday or Wednesday. So high, low, lower high, higher low, double top at resistance. If we reject and if we lose some of the supports and we pull back, then we'll look for a higher low compared to 10,761. Looking at it on the 12 hour time frame, just a little bit of a different view. And we could see the clear tightening range. Personally, I prefer if we reject here and see this range tighten up more because if we can break both of these resistance levels at the same time after tightening up a bit more, then it will get more follow through and more momentum will be built up in my opinion. Again, it's just like I used to call the equilibriums a rubber band effect where the tighter the rubber band gets, the more power there, the more potential energy when that break actually does occur. So looking at it on the four hour chart, it could be a bull flag, absolutely. And if we do bull flag and get a break, then we're going to be looking up at 12,445 as the next resistance level. Personally, I'm not going to be very aggressive if we do get a bull break because I would prefer a tighter range. That being said, if I'm here and the bull break is occurring, I may enter a small day trade position as I already have a swing position and I already have a long term position. So maybe just a quick flip position. So that's what we're waiting on for Bitcoin, checking in on Ethereum. We already broke the lower high pattern and technically changed the trend. We have the low, high of the bounce, which was just a lower high, was 304. We held a higher low at 280 and then got the bull break over 304. That being said, we did not break 324.50 behind it. So it's not an incredibly convincing move from these bulls. And looking at the weekly time frame, we could very easily stay within this range between our high and low of the pullback on this weekly time frame for another few weeks. So keeping that in mind for Ethereum with resistance currently well over, let's see, we got almost 20% away right now that we could easily see a bounce, a weekly lower high set, pull back for a weekly higher low. That could take us into August. So might be a bit of a slowdown in the cryptocurrency space over July. ETH BTC, this was the bull candle that got us that break on the daily time frame, but no follow through and we're not changing the trend. We still have a double bottom and a clear lower high pattern. 2835 is the most important resistance. Forming an inside bar right now, if that daily inside bar breaks bearish, we'll have a new daily lower high at 2552. Pretty much have to see the daily trend change and have to get over the daily exponential moving average resistances in order to see any kind of shift in momentum. Litecoin still tightening up as well. We have the low of the pullback, high of the bounce, higher low, lower high, higher low. And we're patiently waiting for a break of this tightening range. You could act on 122.29 if you wanted to be aggressive. But for me, the most important levels are 116.56 support and 127.37 resistance. So tightening range is forming. And again, Ideal if we get one more lower high compared to the 127s and then tighten up a bit more for a few more days. LTC, BTC, still bearish, still clear daily lower highs, still daily exponential resistance. And we're looking down at 0.01 and 9418 as the next support levels as we put in a new daily resistance of 10,988, keeping Bitcoin strongest comparative to Litecoin and Ethereum as long as these Bitcoin pairing charts are in daily downtrends. XRP had a spike up, but that spike did not last long. Looking on the hourly time frame, big bull move, gave it all back over the next dozen hours. But let's look at the, trying to find the best time frame here. Inverse head and shoulders pattern, trying to form on the 12 hour to change the trend. Most important resistance is gonna be the top of that bull move. That is at 4113. And again, I still consider anything under 4287 as a lower high and make that 429. Anything under 429 is just a lower high on this bounce. Need a clear daily trend change as this was a pullback and a lower high every single daily candlestick until we found our bottom and this bounce is still just a daily lower high. BNB, 
Clear resistance here is 34.38. Bulls are struggling to get over that level. So low, high of the bounce, another base of support at 32.40, but inability to break resistance. If we look at it on the 12 hour time frame, a little bit more clear. And looks a lot like Bitcoin in that regard. Let's look at the 12 hour here and then the 12 hour on Bitcoin. Very similar action as we are testing resistance. And last, L-I-N-K, L -I -N -K, USD. So anything under 375 is just a lower high. We had a bounce. Did we change the four hour trend is the first thing I wanna know when I'm looking is a new hourly, or I should say is a new daily support level being established. Did we change the four hour trend? No, we broke resistance, but we never saw the confirmation of the higher low and higher high. So we're still pulling back on the daily and the bull still must hold 320 support. If we break 320, we have to be cautious as that will be an initial bear break of this daily tightening pattern. And after 320, we look to three and 292. So bears have a slight upper hand. Let's look at it on the 12 hour time frame for LINK. And we can see that this bounce did not last very long at all. And it is still a clear 12 hour lower high pattern and the higher lows are still holding, but they are in jeopardy. So not a whole lot to update, just updating because it's been two days because we've been trading within this range for two days. And I would say if the bears are able to drop down and break 11,800, the odds that we're going to see this range continue to tighten would increase a good bit. And we would look for that higher low compared to 10,761. I personally would be more comfortable with the bullish entry looking for that higher low to form based off of 10,761 support than I would be entering on a bull break of resistance. And that would be a potential bottom fishing play using that level as our stop. So that's something I'm gonna be keeping an eye out for in the next day or two if we do top out and need to consolidate. If you are bearish, you're top fishing right now. You're making an entry and we already have some members making an entry based off of $12,064 resistance and anticipating the potential of a lower high which will be a worthwhile trade if we don't break 12,064 and if bears don't get stopped out. Otherwise, we are patiently waiting and we should see a break. If we're not gonna break this resistance, sometime in the next five hours, it should be very clear that we're gonna pull back. And if that's the case, then we're probably gonna play a tightening range game into tomorrow. Again, when this is happening, recognizing tightening ranges means go look elsewhere for opportunity. And I personally am back to trading stocks while patiently waiting for cryptocurrency, which has been great the past few weeks, has not been great the past few days as far as opportunity is. The volume is going to increase today, but not in a significant manner currently at this rate. We would have to see a big spike of bull volume on a bull break in order for that to change. So I appreciate you watching. Not much to update. We'll see you see when the break occurs. Not gonna do another update until we either break support or resistance on this daily time frame. I'm gonna lick my wounds and be back good as new in a couple days. See you soon. Do good things. Don't break your finger. Adventurous baby birds making me nervous. So we put down a crash landing pad. So raised bed update, we've got the first pathway of wood chips down. Unfortunately, we ran into a yellow jacket's nest in this, the grass here. So I've got a beekeeper suit on the way. Didn't get stung, fortunately, but going to have to coax them to relocate before we finish that up. Everybody thinks I have food. And we got our slabs delivered, so we're going to start putting the sides here on this raised bed and then we'll put in some rotting wood. Went around the edge of the property and there's tons of wood everywhere, so that'll be good. And then we'll cover that with manure and then we'll cover the manure with straw or grass clippings or something else to keep the moisture contained and protect it from the hot sun. So now we're gonna spend today picking out the best and biggest of these slabs to make the raised beds with. And we're gonna compare, we'll do one where we use these stakes to hold it in place and then we'll do one with screws just as a mini experiment to see how they compare. 